guys, welcome back from math. It's Miss Betbees again, and we are sticking with our gaming theme today with video games, and in particular, we've kind of been hitting on that game that a lot of you guys love, which is Fortnite. So, this week, we are continuing in math with time, okay? So, last week, we really focused on how to tell time to the nearest minute. Think back, do y'all remember doing that? Okay, and we did a little escape game on Friday, I mean on Thursday, and then when um, we finished that game, at the very end, you had like a harder challenge. I asked you to find time that had passed, and we call that elapsed time. Well, that's what we're going to be focusing on this week, okay, today and on Thursday. So. It gets a little bit harder, but I'm trying to make it as much fun as we possibly can because you guys can do this, okay? A lot of you think you can't, but really it's not as difficult as you think it is, okay? So, let's get started kind of looking at some things. Before we actually start with doing some of the problems that I came up with you guys for today, um, we are going to look at some strategies, okay? So, last week I brought my teacher clock Okay, and we use this to find times and find times to the nearest minute. And I told you guys, you know, if you have access at your house to a printer and you could print a uh, clock printable manipulative from home, then that's awesome. Some of us can't do that and that's okay too. You can draw a clock on a piece of paper. You can put your numbers, one through 12, Okay, and then you just want to make sure that since we are telling time to the nearest minute, we have to have more than just those big numbers. You're going to have to put lines or dots between each number. And who remembers, how many minutes are there between each of these numbers? Five, yes, okay? So the fifth minute is on this number. So you really have four lines or four dots between the two numbers because your fifth one comes right here when you get to the actual larger number. Okay, remember that's how we skip count by fives when we're on the numbers to represent our minutes. Okay, we also need to review the hands on our clock because some of you might have forgotten over the weekend because you had so much fun. Okay, um, the hour hand is our shorter hand. On my clock, it's this red hand. Okay, and then our minute hand is our longer hand and on my clock, it's blue. Okay, so this is one tool or strategy that we can use. Now, with the elapsed time, if you are drawing a clock, you might put that start time on there. You might have to find time that's passed. Some people might like to have two clocks drawn. That's fine too. Let's kind of see which one you like and how you like to see it before you go and spend time drawing two clocks though, okay? Uh, the other tool that I'm gonna introduce you to today is who's ever seen a number line in math? Okay, I know a lot of you have. We use number lines all the time for different math problem solving, right? Well, did you know that there is a number line for time? Did you know that? Okay, I had never really used one until I got into really teaching elapsed time a lot. And it looks something like this. I printed a large one. It literally stretches from here all the way to over here. Okay, um, but you guys, you don't necessarily have this at home, but I can show you again how to draw it if you don't have it, okay? You put your times on the clock, and here's the thing too, you might not need to draw them all from 12 a.m. to 12 p.m., okay, and so on. You could maybe draw yours with just the hours that you need, make it smaller. Like you might only be working with times from 6 a.m., to 9 a.m. So you might only draw one that's this big, okay? So don't stress your, yourself out thinking you've got to draw this whole big thing. We're going to look at sections of it today, and I'm going to show you how to find elapsed time using the number line, okay, or kind of like a timeline, and using our analog clock, okay? Now, one more thing I need to tell you about this is that each of these lines, do you notice it kind of looks like a ruler? that you used to measure. Remember using those before we got out in third quarter? Okay, well, if you look, these smaller, shorter lines, and then you have the one that's longer in the middle, 
which represents, remember, in inches and centimeters, it's that halfway marker. It's halfway between there. And it represents the same thing here. So each of these lines represent five minutes, just like your numbers on the clock. So you have five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. See how that longer one represents 30 minutes? And what is half of 60 minutes? 30 minutes, right? Which is our halfway marker on a clock for our minutes since we have 60 minutes in an hour. So then we have 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, and then 60. And we know when we get to 60 minutes, it's a new hour. So do you see how that works there? Okay, so it's not too hard to draw if you were to do that. Now remember when you are drawing a line, um, sometimes you want to use equal spacing. We're also going to look to, you don't always have to have these lines. Like if you're skipping from one time to, an, you know, it's telling you the time that's passed maybe, like an hour and 15 minutes, you could kind of draw a line and then just hop. So I'll show you that when we get to those kinds of problems. Okay, so let's get into our work and our practice today, okay? So I've come up with a couple of problems for you, and I started with the kind of the easier ones and we'll build up to some that are a little more difficult, okay? We'll do more on Thursday and we'll kind of travel through time and fly through time. All right, so the first one says, you started playing Fortnite when it was 46 minutes after noon. Think about that for a minute. What time did you start playing Fortnite? Hmm. Well, normally we see somebody say, we started playing at this time, right? Well, instead of just jumping into finding a really difficult elapsed time, this one has some time that's passed and the way they've written it makes you have to think a little bit about elapsed time, okay? So it says up here, remember in any kind of problem with words, like we'd been focusing on uh, previously prior to last week, word problems and thinking about what do we know, what are we trying to find, we have to do that here too, anytime you see words, okay? So we know that you started playing the game when it was 46 minutes after noon, okay? Minutes are important because we have to know, are we talking about hours? Are we talking about minutes? We need to know that it says after, not before, right? We also have to know what noon means. Who knows what noon means? Okay, if you're thinking 12 o'clock in the middle of the day, you are exactly right, okay? So some of you may even want to write that. You might want to write that I know that that is 12 o'clock, okay? So we wanna find out what time we started playing and it's written basically in word form right here. We know that noon is 12, and then we know that we started playing 46 minutes after noon. Well, what would 46 minutes be after 12? This one I bet you can do in your head. You probably don't even need a tool. Who can do it in their head? Okay, this is an even start of a new hour, right? So if we just put 46 minutes on there, is our hour changing at all? No, because how many minutes do we have to have for the hour to change? 60, because there's 60 minutes in an hour. So we don't need to change our minutes here, right? I mean, I'm sorry, our hour here, just our minutes. So if it was 46 minutes after noon, then we would have 12, and remember we put a colon, and then we write our minutes, 46. So the time that you started playing was 1246. That was easy to do in our heads. But if we didn't know that, that's okay you would put what time on your clock? Well, if it's 46 minutes after noon, you'd have to put noon on your clock, right? Well, what time did we say noon was? We said that it was at 12 o'clock, right? So we would put noon on our clock and then we would go to 46 minutes after this time. Well, let's count that. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, and then one more, 46, right? And then if we look at our clock, our hour hand is between the 12 and the one. And what did we learn about that last week when our hour hand falls between two numbers? Yeah, we learned that it's the hour before because it hasn't quite gotten here yet. It's getting close, that's why it's between there, but it's still the hour before. So in this case, 12 on the clock comes before the one, 
right? So 12, and then we count our minutes, 45, 46. So did y'all see how I used that tool to help me? But do you see how I could do it in my head on that one? Yeah, now not all of them are gonna be like that, okay? Started with the kind of the simplest ones and then we'll move forward. Okay, let's look at another one because there's lots of different ways that you can word problems for elapsed time. So I'm gonna try to hit on each kind today so that nothing is you know, foreign to you. You now will be exposed to the different kinds. All right, so here it says, you started playing Fortnite at 1.15. You played for one hour and 10 minutes. What time did you finish playing Fortnite? Okay, so on this one, you have a start time. It says you started playing at 1.15. So started at 1.15, right? Then it says how long you played. So it tells you how long you did something. You told you how much time elapsed, how much time passed. So you played for one hour and 10 minutes. So this one's different than the other one in that we have hours and minutes. Now I did keep it simple for you and I did even five minute markers and things like that today. But I am gonna challenge you more on Thursday. All right, so what time did you finish playing Fortnite? Well, we know our start time, right? And we know, so we know it started at 1.15 and we spent one hour, and notice I'm using abbreviations here for this, and 15, oh, I'm sorry, 10, 10 minutes. Okay, so again, I bet some of this, because our numbers are in multiples of five, makes it a little bit easier. Okay, so if our start time was 1.15 and we go one hour, what's our hour in 1.15? Our hour's one, right? Well, what's one plus another one? Two, right? So two would be our new hour. Now, sometimes your hour could change again. It depends on if your minutes get greater than what number, everybody? 60, right? If we get more than 60 minutes, then we have another hour. So pay attention to that and don't get tricked if that ever happens. So here I have 15 minutes, right? I go 10, okay? What's 10 more than 15? Man, you learned that back in first grade. 10 more than a number. 10 more than 15 would be 25, right? The only digit that's changing is your tens place and it's increasing, it's getting bigger by 10. Nothing is changing in my ones place. Okay, because there are no ones in 10. So what's 15 plus 10? 25. So did that get larger than 60? Did not. So the time would be 2.25. Do you see that? Now, again, I told you we were going to use clocks today and timelines, so I'm going to show you that strategy as well if you didn't know that. But I know there are some of you who could do that in your head um, and talk yourself through it like Miss Betbees just did. All right, so I'm going to put, when I'm trying to find elapsed time on an analog clock, I want to put my start time, and then I want to go the elapsed time to find my ending time when I'm looking for one set up like this where I'm looking for the ending time. So I'm going to put 115. So I put my hour hand on one. And I always tell my kids, start at the one o'clock hour and then move your minutes. So 5, 10, 15. Now you're going to then go one hour and 10 minutes. Well, if we go one hour, that means we go 60 minutes around the clock. And so a lot of you probably already have knowledge and know that if you go an hour from where you are right now, on the, with the minutes, your minute hand's gonna wind up in the same spot, but you gain an hour, okay? Watch it, it's gonna go around completely the whole time, and I will count it so you can see that it's 60 minutes. Are you ready? Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60. See how I wound up in the exact same spot for my minute hand? Because it's been one hour, but what did change? It went from being one o'clock in the hour to two o'clock because the one hour passed. So now it's 2.15. Then I need to go my 10 more minutes, right? So we go five, 10. What time is on the clock? 
Well, our hour hands between the two and the three, closer to the two, but we also know that that means it is the hour before and two comes before three, and then our minute hand is on the 25 minute marker. If we didn't know that and we didn't have these numbers, we would count five, 10, 15, 20, 25. Do y'all see that? Okay, let me show it to you on this number line because this one we haven't really looked at, haven't shown you this strategy yet, so now I'm gonna show it to you. So if I was using a number line. This has midnight and it's got all of your a.m. hours. So you're usually asleep at midnight, right? You sleeping at 1 a.m., 2 a.m., 3 a.m., 4 a.m., 5 a.m., 6 a.m. you might be starting to get up. Maybe not now that we're out of school, maybe 7 or 8, but on a school day you might get up a little earlier. We ought to be at school by 8. And then 9 a.m., 10 a.m., 11 a.m. And then when you hit 12 o'clock in the middle of the day, it becomes that noon time we were talking about. And we switch from the a.m. hours to the p.m. hours. Y'all remember learning that last year? I know you do. So then you're at 12 o'clock p.m., 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, and 11 o'clock. And then it starts over again. Okay, just keeps going, okay, from a.m. to p.m., a.m. to p.m. Now, I want you to think about what makes sense. I didn't put a.m. or p.m. in our problem, but if I started playing Fortnite at 1.15, do you think I was playing it at 1.15 a.m. or 1.15 p.m.? What would make sense? hopefully you're not playing it at 1.15 a.m., right? Because you should be sleeping at that time. So we're gonna go to 1.15 p.m., okay? Now on yours, it's not labeled, so it doesn't matter. You can just draw your number line, okay? And I want to go to 1.15, so here I am at 5, 10, and 15 after the one. Now, it told me to go one hour, okay? Well, if I go one hour, I go to two and then to 15, five, 10, 15. So here I am. Then I need to go my additional 10 minutes. Five, 10. And where am I? Well, it's two, and then my minutes are five, 10, 15, 20, 25. So again, you see I get two, 25. So I just showed you three different ways that you could get that time easily. Who thinks they could do that on your own? I know you can. I want you to start practicing it. Okay, let's look at one more right here, okay? Now this one is a little different in that it doesn't have a start time and how long you spent. This one has a start time and an end time. And we have to figure out how much time passed in the between, okay? So we're trying to find how much time elapsed, how much time passed. All right, so Miss Betby started playing Fortnite at 3.15 with her little boy. She had to stop playing at four to go and cook dinner. How long did she play Fortnite? So we want to know how long I played Fortnite. Well, how can we find that? If we know the time that I started playing, since I started playing at 3.15, and then I had to stop to go cook dinner at four o'clock, so I stopped at four. How much time passed? Well, look at it, think about it. This is one where I think you definitely would like to use a strategy, okay, to help you, some sort of tool, manipulative. So here is the clock. Let's do this one first. So we're gonna put our start time, right? And then we're gonna count how many minutes it takes us to get to the ending time. So what time do I need to be putting on my clock, everybody? 3.15, so I'm gonna put 3.15. All right, so here's 3.15. Okay, now I have to stop at four. So here I have to kind of change my mindset and think, okay, I need to count how many minutes it's gonna take me to get to four o'clock. Well, let's count it. Luckily, this isn't too far away. So five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45. Do I now have four o'clock on my clock? Yes, so I had to think about what does four o'clock look like on my clock to find this one, which can be difficult if you're using an analog clock if you don't know what that looks like. I think most of us know that by now though. So when I counted my minutes from 3.15 to four o'clock, 
We learned last week about quarter hours, okay? So there's another 15, another 15, another 15. So that's 15 plus 15 plus 15, which also we can use our knowledge in mental math, and that gives us 45 minutes, right? Because 15 plus 15 is 30, plus 10 more is 40, plus 5 more, because I split that last 15 up into 10s and 1s, and it gives me 45 minutes, okay? All right, so 45 minutes is how long it took. Now let's look at that over here on our number line, okay? Because I am wanting to show you the different strategies. So 315, okay, so again, if I'm gonna go cook dinner, is it a.m. or p.m.? Use your context clues. Yes, it is going to be p.m. So I'm gonna go over here and we're gonna go to 315. So here's three. And remember, each of these is five, five, 10, 15. So here's 315. And then it said I played until 4 o'clock. Well, let's see how many minutes that is. Let's just count them. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45. So 45 minutes. Which strategy do you think was the easiest for this one? Yes, I think the number line was easier too because um, it's very visual, very easy to see. But this is one of those where I know my start time's 3.15, so I would need the 3 o'clock hour, okay? And then I know my ending time is 4, so if I have just this drawn on my number line, if I drew a number line with just 3 o'clock with all the 5's to 4 o'clock, then I know I have enough to actually solve this problem. So think about that because that's a way that you could draw a number line for time and not have to draw this entire thing, okay? And we'll look more at that on Thursday. Okay, guys, so I had fun with some Fortnite theme today. I hope that you did too. And I want you to join me again on Thursday. And I want you to practice this. Practice this up until Thursday. See if you can challenge yourself. Make up some times. Have somebody make up some problems for you. Practice them. Practice using that number line if you like that strategy or draw your clocks or use a clock if you have one, okay? And I will see you back Thursday so that we can travel through time. Bye, guys.